being teachable. All adults should be open to what God may want to teach them through the younger generation. Here's Gene to explain. Saul had a problem with this. And we're going to see it illustrated in the life of, uh, of what happened here in Jonathan's experience. First Samuel 14, and we're going to read several passages here. The battle extended beyond beth Aven, and the men of Israel were worn out that day. For Saul had placed the troops under an oath. The man who eats food before evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies, is cursed. And let me just simply say, there is no spiritual fiber to that statement whatsoever. That is pure arrogance. It is purely insensitive and stupid. It did not come from God. It came from Saul. And he's mad, and he's going to put all of his people under this oath uh, simply because of what he's feeling. And he, so he, he makes a very unfortunate uh, statement. And of course, his, his men, his army, I mean, he's the king. He's the commanding officer. So, we read, none of the troops tasted any food. Everyone went into the forest. And here was the temptation. There was honey on the ground. And when the troops entered the forest, they saw the flow of honey, but none of them ate any of it because they feared the oath. They didn't fear God. They feared the king. And they feared the oath of King Saul. However, Jonathan had not heard his father make the troops swear the oath. And so the story continues. He reached out with the end of the staff he was carrying, and he dipped it into the honeycomb. And when he ate the honey, he had renewed energy, which, by the way, an army needs in the midst of battle, in the midst of all of this. He had renewed energy. And then one of the troops said, probably with great fear, your father made the troops solemnly swear the man who eats food today is cursed and the troops are exhausted. Well, what happened in this particular situation? If you go on in the, the passage, 1 Samuel 14, 29 and 30, we read that Jonathan replied, My father has brought trouble to the land. And this was based not just on that particular statement, that oath, but he saw his father deteriorating and making some very foolish decisions. Samuel is growing spiritually. Saul is deteriorating. And his son sees it. My father has brought trouble to the land. Just look at how I have renewed energy because I tasted a little honey. It's only common sense that we're in battle. We need food. And just a little has given me renewed energy. How much better if the troops had eaten freely today from the plunder they took from their enemies? It's just common sense, he's saying. That was not a good decision on my father's part. And then the slaughter of the Philistines would have been much greater. Well, what happened when uh, Saul found out about it? Well, he's still mad. And, of course, his son is involved here, which makes his statement even more foolish. Saul declared to him, May God punish me and do so severely if you do not die, Jonathan. That takes a lot of evil thinking in a situation like this. Rather than backing off, dealing with his pride, dealing with his arrogance, he's threatening to kill his own son. But the people realized how incredibly foolish this was. But the people said to Saul, Must Jonathan die who accomplished such a great deliverance for Israel? And he had done battle, and of course he had accomplished great things, and God was with him. No, they said, as the Lord lives, not a hair of his head will fall to the ground, for he worked with God's help today. You see, the people, the men, the other people in his army saw the foolishness of this and saw that this was Saul's doing, this was not God's doing. And they recognized it through this experience. And they stated, he worked with God's help today. So the people redeemed Jonathan and he did not die. In other words, there was a total revolt against the king and against this very foolish decision. And then Saul gave up the pursuit of the Philistines, and the Philistines returned to their own territory. So here we, again, let me just state that we see Jonathan, a young man, growing spiritually in his relationship to God and trusting God, 
we see Saul moving in the opposite direction. And if you go back through that passage, when you see Jonathan's victories, you'll see on uh, at least three separate occasions where he gave honor to God. He knew he could not achieve this without God's presence, without God's power. Saul, on the other hand, was doing this in his own strength. And so you see the, the result of that situation. The question is, is why is it often difficult for adults to listen to and learn from the younger generation? We have a, a beautiful illustration, by the way, of, of Jonathan in the New Testament when we look at Timothy, who was much further along. And when Paul wrote 1 Timothy, he really paid tribute to his youth. So if you look at, um, at 1 Timothy uh, 4.12, let no one despise your youth. Or another translation has, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Let no one despise your youth. Instead, you, Timothy, as a young man, should be an example to the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and in purity. And here we have a, a beautiful exception, uh, as it were, in Jonathan, I think, and then in Timothy, of course, who has much more of God's revelation and knowledge of God's plan through Jesus Christ. Uh, but let, let's go to that question for reflection and response. Why is it so often difficult for adults to learn from a man like Jonathan or from a young man like Timothy? To learn from the younger generation. And basically, I think there's a very basic reason. It's illustrated in Saul, and that's arrogance. See, arrogance has a way of blurring our judgments. It has a way of uh, distorting our values. Uh, and that applies, of course, to both youth and to the aged. Uh, arrogance affects us all. Uh, it can happen to us both. As we get older, we don't want to admit our weaknesses. After all, we're supposed to be strong. We're older. We're more experienced. But you see, the older we get, if we're not careful, the more we can justify ourselves uh, to cover up our weaknesses. And pride and arrogance sets in, and we become unteachable if we're not careful. It happens also to young people. We see a lot of that in our culture today. And youth basically lack experience. They don't even know what they don't know. And I remember when, uh, when I was 40, I thought I had a lot of answers. And then I turned 50 and I began to realize that there's a lot of stuff I don't know yet. And it seemed like with every decade in my life, I became more aware of how much I didn't know. And that comes with age and experience. And God wants us, as we grow older, to develop a sense of humility and teachability rather than a sense of arrogance. So we're all vulnerable, whether we're young or whether we're old. And so we have to be very, very careful. But the principle here really focuses on adults because of Saul's attitude towards his son. So the principle reads, all adults should be open to what God may want to teach them through the younger generation. And we can learn a lot if we listen, no matter what the age of those who are maturing, obviously, in the Lord Jesus Christ.